going to go over the um, lower body from the perspective of starting with the hips as they are attaching the appendicular skeleton, the lower limbs, uh, to the axial skeleton. Remember the axial skeleton is in the middle of the body. These are the hips, left hip, hip or left coxal, right hip or right coxal. Some of the bone markings, the ilium, okay, is a superior bone. Here's the iliac crest. This fossa is a depression, iliac fossa. We know also that we have the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spines. Inferior to that, of course, anterior inferior iliac spines. In addition, okay, on the ilium, all right, we would have posterior superior iliac spines, and then we have the posterior inferior iliac spines. We mention these bone markings because there are usually sites of muscle attachment that we'll talk about muscles later. Now, in addition, okay, the ilium has the greater sciatic notch. The sciatic nerve, of course, goes through here, um, can oftentimes be impinged on a muscle that comes, okay, um, at right angles, basically, to it. So, greater sciatic notch. If we look at the anterior bone, these two anterior bones are the pubic bones, or pubis bones. They come together in the pubic symphysis. It's a joint type that uh, is slightly movable, amphi, uh, is what we call amphiarthrotic. In addition, okay, if we look at the inferior bone, this is called the ischium, ischium, inferior bones, ischium, ischial tuberosity is what we sit on. We sometimes refer to them as the sits bones. So when you sit for long periods of time, that starts to hurt perhaps a little bit. In addition to the ischial tuberosities, we have the ischial spines. Remember, spines are those things that stick out. So spines, spines, processes, they all stick out. So ischial spine. The acetabulum is the socket that receives the head of the femur, whoops, the acetabulum. So it is the um, similar, similar to the glenoid fossa, but obviously a much deeper socket for this much rather, rather large head of the uh, femur. Now, acetabulum is made up of all three bones, so part of the acetabulum or that socket is part of the ilium, the pubis, and the ischium. The other thing to note, okay, we have this obturator foramen. It is the largest hole in the body foramen meaning whole, obturator foramen, lots of muscles, nerves, blood vessels, and so forth that you can probably imagine go through there. This little line here you can note, okay, is where the ilium attaches to the sacrum, okay, what we call the sacro or sacroiliac joint. Well, let's talk about the femur. This is the head of the femur. It's the round knob that fits into the acetabulum. This would be the neck. This is the greater trochanter. Remember, it's similar to the greater tubercle up here in the arm greater trochanter, pretty much an area of muscle attachment. It, of course, has a lesser trochanter. It's easier to see the lesser trochanter, okay, and the posterior aspect more medially located. Site of muscle attachment there as well. Um, we know that, okay, in addition, okay, on the femur, we have a ridge of bone down the posterior aspect. Um, this ridge of bone is called the linea aspera, not to be confused with the linea alba, a band of fascia. Linea aspera, okay, is posterior. We have, you can see them pretty well here. These are condyles. We're looking posteriorly. Okay, so this would be the medial condyle. This would be the lateral condyle. The medial and lateral condyles of the femur articulate with the medial and lateral condyles of the shin bone, we know as the uh, tibia. So I'm going to turn this around one more time and look at that from the perspective of, okay, I'm holding the femur. The distal end, where we have those condyles, rounded protuberances, we have medial epicondyle. Remember, epi means above, lateral epicondyle. Notice, of course, the bone that's been attached here is the patella. It's not a part of the knee joint. It forms a separate joint. So where the femur comes together with the tibia on these condyles, we say this is the knee joint, or the tibiofemoral joint, tibiofemoral joint. Well, let's look at some bones from the standpoint of the, the leg bones. Anything from knee on down to ankle is referred to as leg bone, leg, excuse me, leg. Um, basically, the femur is the thigh. So this is the tibia or shin bone. It's the medial bone. You can see this is the fibula, rather skinny in comparison. This is the tibial tuberosity, the bump, okay, that oftentimes we shave as we uh, shave our legs up near our knee. Um, over here on the lateral aspect is the tibial tubercle. It's a site of muscle or me, attachment for the iliotibial band. Sometimes we hear about that in runners who 
of iliotibial band syndrome. If I go to the distal end of the tibia, you can see pretty much where this screw is. On the medial aspect here, we've got this medial malleolus. Medial malleolus. So you can see this is basically the bumps that stick out on the medial aspect of um, basically near our foot or ankle. All right, here's the fibula. The fibula has obviously a proximal end and a distal end. Its distal end is the lateral malleolus. And again, if you just palpate your own, okay, you'll find it's a knot that sticks out quite prominently. And then if you'll notice, okay, this is the fibular head, head of the fibula. It attaches to the, the uh, um, tibia. It's not a part at all of the knee joint. So this joint is called the tibiofibular joint, not the uh, tibiofemoral, which is the knee joint. Now, I've got a foot that I'm going to grab and we'll look at the bones of the ankle, okay, and the foot. And I can just get my hip here adjusted. Perhaps not. All right, here's the foot. This bone is the talus. This is the calcaneus. If you can imagine, the fibula would be here, and the tibia would come on the medial aspect. Talus calcaneus. This is the navicular, navicular, excuse me, right here. These three are the cuneiforms, and here is the cuboid. All of these are referred to as metatarsals, starting with metatarsal one through five. Each of these represents a digit, digit being a toe. Digits are made up of either two phalanges, as in the great toe, or three phalanges, as in toes two through five. Usually we would compare the tarsal bones to the carpals. There are seven tarsals, okay? And I usually use Trixie counted nine candy canes. So Trixie is talus, calcaneus, counted. Nine is navicular. Candy, which would be the caneiforms. It's C-U-N-E-I-F-O-R-M-S. And then here's cuboid, would be candy canes. Here's the canes.